Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode. I'm here today with Jade Francesca, and I've been looking forward to this conversation. So I will let you jump straight in and tell us a bit about who you are. So um, I'm a creative strategist and designer. Mm -hmm. I actually started out as a virtual assistant, but before all of that, I was actually actually doing a PhD in psychology. Mm -hmm. So I made quite a jump from psychology to business um, because during the pandemic, everything kind of was put to a pause in the mm -hmm. educational world. And then that kind of gave me some time to reflect and think about where I wanted to go. And I wanted a break from school and that environment that was quite toxic, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and I was going to start as a VA just because I wanted to do some work. But then mm -hmm. I realized I do have a big passion for design, like graphic design, web design, as well as strategy when it comes to any kind of media, any kind of marketing. So I was like, oh, I like that much more than what I was doing before. <laughs> so I uh, now I'm established as a creative strategist because I want to use creativity to really think outside the box, mm -hmm. um, find ways to help you know, my clients and my audience find ways to reclaim their time and so that they don't spend like their entire lives on social media or their website or all these platforms that they need for their business, but that's not necessarily their zone of genius. Mm -hmm. I want to help them, you know, focus on their zone of genius, on their passions, what they really like doing. And so that they can really just shine and thrive. Mm -hmm. And um, my strategies also help them attract the right kind of clients and right kind of audience, because um, there will be a lot of people, a lot of strategists who will be like, oh, do X, Y, Z strategy um, to have a yeah. bunch of followers. But mm. what is the point of having a bunch of followers if it's not the right kind of followers? So that's why my strategies are really targeted to both reclaim your time so it's mm. an efficient, streamlined strategy, but also attract the right people so that you can really love your work because I've noticed um, I've had great relationships with all of my clients but I've noticed mm -hmm. sometimes like the tasks uh, because I started out as a VA so some of the tasks I was like oh I don't like it that much and other tasks I really really love mm -hmm. so if you can really focus on doing what you love it's going to make your work just so much easier because to me I didn't think I could enjoy working because I hated school and I thought that was going to be my life I'm just gonna yeah like school I'm not gonna like my job but you know that's just how it is and like I used to think like that but now mm -hmm. I'm like no you don't have to live like that so if you can focus on what you do best what you love best mm -hmm. um, and then put those things to the side and have ways to reclaim your time then mm -hmm. you're going to be more happy more aligned and that's I want to be able to help people do that through strategy and design absolutely that sounds like a powerful shift so I guess some good things came from that whole pandemic. Yes, um, it's the silver lining in yeah. this pandemic, honestly, just, I mean, I was thinking about, you know, taking a break, but I, at first it was a break. Now I think it's an indefinite break. I mean, I might mm. want to finish it one day so I could mm. have uh, my degree, but it's not aligned for me right now no. um, or in the near future because it was, um, as much as I love psychology, the environment was really toxic. I mean, universities are not are not a great place to be in general. They could they could be yep they could be kind of kind of tough. The whole atmosphere can be very competitive yes. and very cold in some ways. Yes, even our psychology department didn't have a lot of empathy for people. You, so, <laughs> that's so, funny, right? Because you think. Yeah. They had um, the insight to be. Yes, they tried to kick me out because I became depressed, and I was like, um, "I will." I was like, "Um, you're you know about depression. You know it exists. What wow. are you doing?" Um, and when I called them out on it, obviously they did not kick me out, but they did try. Um, and I was like, "For depression, really?" I think. <laughs> and so depressed, like, um, if anybody do, was supposed like, to to understand and support yeah, that i mean they didn't it's just wow. it's cold it's a cold world in the university so that's why i was like i need something warmer something happier yes. and um i find it's it's ironic because in my trainings 
I felt like I wasn't really helping people that much, even though I was doing psychology, but now I feel like I'm helping people so much more, even though it's not psychology related at all. So yeah. it's funny how things work out. Yes. And, and I love that it works out like that. And I do believe that. And especially one of the things you said that you started to realize what made you happy and, and what didn't. And that, this whole idea that we're not actually supposed to enjoy our jobs, we're just supposed to do it. But then realizing, no, I get to yeah. design things so that I enjoy my days. Yes. That's beautiful, I think. And I think that's one of the things as sensitives that we are good at once we start, you know, honoring that sense in ourselves because. I believe that the sensitivity makes us less likely to settle for things that aren't working for us or that's making us depressed. It might take us a while to figure out that it's not working for us, I think, because we are trained to, you know, try to live up to the expectations, try to make people happy around us. Um, but once we realize it, I think we're very good at picking up on what works for us and what doesn't. Was there something that especially helped you do that? Or was there like a moment when you realized this isn't working, I gotta do something different? Um, my journey was kind of a, a dark one in the way that I, I really had to, even though I knew all the signs, you know, because I was studying psychology, I was well aware of everything that was happening to me, mm -hmm. but I was still, you know, I was still allowing it to happen because mm -hmm. it was, I had been surrounded all my life by people and institutions that they want you to fit into a mold. And as sensitive, oh, yes. it's hard to feel, fit it. I mean, I don't know anybody who can fit it in the mold to begin with, but I know that um, like as sensitive or like neurodivergent people, which I also am, is it's just, it's really hard to fit in that mold. And, but I was just like, oh no, I have to, I have to. And this thought yes. that it's this thought of like, oh, I'm the problem because I'm too sensitive or yes. my brain doesn't work the way it does for others. Mm. And I was always blaming it on me until I was like, wait, no, <laughs> um, there's nothing wrong with me being more sensitive to sounds or light, or there's nothing wrong with, you know, my brain working super fast sometimes, and then not mm -hmm. so fast, depending on time or what's happening. And um, because that's the thing, I was getting the same results as others, but the way I was doing it was completely different. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to keep up with those same results. Yeah. But I was like doing things that were really unhealthy mm. like like not sleeping like drinking coffee like all day long mm. so like keep to have like to make sure that my brain was working like a thousand miles an hour so that I could keep up with other people mm. and although on the outside it didn't look like anything was wrong with me because I yeah. was like I was showing up I was yeah. um getting good grades and uh, everything was done on time like there was like nobody could ever suspect it yeah. it's like on the inside you're mm -hmm. just kind of killing yourself more and more and then yeah. once I reached a point where I didn't have enough energy left in me to keep up with other people I was like well I physically can't anymore mm -hmm. it's not I need to take a break from all of this and be in a place where I can you know, be more of myself because yeah. at that point it was, it was about, um, it wasn't even about people pleasing anymore. It was like pleasing an, an environment. It's yeah. like, if like pleasing the environment that you're in, it's like, mm -hmm. and it's an environment that's very rigid. School is very rigid. Um, jobs are very rigid, like big corporations. It's mm -hmm. like, unless you manage to have a boss who is like really kind, it's probably going to be very rigid because there's just so many rules and it's not easy when you're a sensitive or neurodivergent person to navigate mm -hmm. through all those rules. And I was like, you know what? I need something that will allow me to just have like those small adjustments yeah. that make it just easier. Like for instance, um, I need access to a bathroom all day long. 
because I never know when I'm going to need it. And okay. that's just one of the things that my body needs. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's a bunch of people with the same illnesses that I have that are not, it doesn't mean your life is going to be less fulfilling or anything like that. It just means like you need to make some adjustments. But mm. if you're at school or at work, I mean, at school, they were more lenient about people just going to the bathroom. But at work, I mean, I've been in workplaces where I couldn't go to the bathroom. Wow. So, and it's, it things really simple, just as going to the bathroom, it wasn't allowed. And it's like, it was all things like that, just accumulating. It's like small yeah. things that kind of accumulate. And at one mm -hmm. point, it's like, you feel like a robot because I mean, yeah. I didn't even have um, full autonomy over my body at that point. No. So it was like, mm. that was what made me wake up and be like, okay, like, this is not a way to live. And no. that is not a way I want to live either. Um, it doesn't work for me. I don't know how it works for other people, but for me, it just didn't. And okay. that's why I started, I need to be an independent contractor. I need to, mm -hmm. at first, that's what I was going to be. And then I turned to like having a business, but yeah. at first it was really like, I need to be in control of myself and yeah. my body and my body yeah, instead of yeah. the mercy of the environment around me yes even though as you say it might seem like a small thing but it becomes really big once it's yeah. cut off from us or taken yeah. away from us because it it is just a natural basic need so yeah and i think sometimes we are kind of lucky that we can't control our bodies that way that we do need sleep and food and bathroom breaks because otherwise as you say we 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 were probably more likely to actually become robots and just put all the physical needs aside and just keep marching so i think it's kind of clever that we're born with physical sort of stop blocks that you could go this far and no further or your health will suffer yes so. i mean in my last um, job that I, I was working a few a couple years ago, mm. I ended up in the span of uh, a few months, I ended up in the hospital twice because I wasn't allowed to take care of my body. If I was mm. sick, you still got to work. And okay. at one point, I mean, I had the flu and I was in, there was no time for me to eat or drink a whole day, an, an 11 hour shift. Mm. I mean, I ended up in the hospital. That's just kind of natural if you're not. And you know, yes. because... I was young and I was like, well, I'm young. I'm going to survive that. But yeah, when you have the flu, you should be hydrating yourself and resting yes. no matter what yeah. age you yeah. are. Mm. So it's, it's like, it's just, it's not just mental health that gets affected in those environments. It's also mm. like physical health that can get yeah. really affected. And that's what just made me like, no, I can't. That must have been a wake up call. Yes, it was, it was really, um, I was terrified of having ever an employer again, because I was like, because yeah. my employer was, he was a good guy even, but mm -hmm. he was just so stressed about his business that he, like, he was just, he was never there. So if there was an mm -hmm. issue and I was like, hey, I need some time off or anything, he was just not there because he was too stressed and it is an yeah. old little like world. Mm -hmm. So it's just, yeah, that's why I was like, no, I need to be in control of yeah. what's happening so I can focus on things that are more important than just mm -hmm. you know working until you drop yeah and I think that focus is so important because as you're just explaining your boss might have been in charge but because he sort of let his circumstances run the show he was stressed as well and couldn't be there for his employees so even being in business for yourself, I guess that's still something that you have to be aware of, which I'm yes. sure you, I'm sure that you are because that's how you sort of got there. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how your you have experienced your sensitivities? You mentioned sounds and smells. Are there other things as well that you? So I do have. Um a few <laughs> sensitivities when you sent the list i was like there's yeah. too many of there <laughs> on there that tick, i relate tick, to tick, tick, tick. Yes. Yeah, I was just like, yeah. Yeah. um 
when I think the one, uh, of course, I do have um, an eye per sensitivity to sound, smells, light, mm -hmm. um, and other stuff like that in my it hasn't affected me too much in my business because since I'm in my house, I kind of have like more control over the sounds yeah, and the smells yeah. and what's happening, yeah. which wasn't the case when I would have to work outside. It was very overwhelming. Um, now what I tend to um, kind of use more as a positive thing, because when I, I was, um, I mentioned that I was a very, imaginative and creative mm -hmm. child who was lost in their own little world and yeah. um, always zoning out like even mm -hmm. even as a baby I'm like zoning out and I just or I lay in bed like it's so funny like you see that baby who's just laying there and doing absolutely nothing not even mm -hmm. requesting attention just zoning yeah. out on things and even as a child I was just zoning out everywhere as a child I zoned out even more I would mm -hmm. just imagine like worlds in my head mm -hmm. and um I would be so unfocused on a lot of things and a lot of people would get annoyed at me because I couldn't focus on conversations. Now with time, you know, and age, I've trained myself to focus more, but it, mm. there was a time when I was younger, I could barely focus on anything. Mm. Classes, I couldn't, even in university, I could barely focus on classes because my brain would just go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And um, this imagination and all of that, which was a quote unquote problem when I was younger because other people said it was a problem. Yep, I yep. didn't think it was one. Other people said it was. Yeah. Um, but now I use this sensitivity as a way to create in a more, instead of thinking about like fictional worlds or stuff yeah. like that, I try to imagine, um, you know, designs or yeah. imagine ways to create content for business uh, and for my clients. Mm -hmm. um, it, I also used to do a lot, a lot of writing. So of course, writing um, a fiction book is not the same as writing a blog or something that is, you know, about nonfiction, mm -hmm. but it's still, it's still writing and you still yeah. need to have creativity and imagination to be able to write something, even for copywriting, because you need to imagine it. You need yeah. to imagine, you know, like the person um, that's going to read this, the mm -hmm. ideal person who's going to read this, how are they going to feel when they read this? And, you know, like I'm using that creativity and imagination in my business. Um, and now it's extremely useful now, something yeah. that even just a few years ago, I was still getting berated about mm -hmm. um, because I was still like too lost in um, my own world, which I always thought like, what is the issue about that? Like my, the world in my head is so much more fun. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Like it was, just, especially when I was, you know, younger and, um, and now even as adults, we do have more control over our lives, but you know, as children, we do not have much control no, of our lives. No. So it's like escaping to that world is just, I feel a way a lot of children um, prefer to, to be like like make believe it's like such a yeah. big child play so like I just yeah, kind of yeah. kept that like as I grew older mm -hmm. um because to me that was just so important we need um that time to just kind of put a pause and just yeah. like explore our imagination or someone mm -hmm. else's imagination through a book through a movie yeah. through a yeah. way through music even yeah. but it's just all those things that are so important to take a pause and I always as a as a sensitive you know child I was mm. so thankful to all these authors who wrote these amazing worlds for my brain to escape yes in. yes and I hope one day I will be able to do that for others I have yeah. way too many books started that are not finished like fiction books mm -hmm. um but that's a project for um later as now I'm focusing more on my business and mm -hmm. using creativity and imagination in a more concrete way yeah. but it's still um it's still very very important to me and it's a sensitivity that out of all the sensitivities I have it's the one that I personally felt like it was never a problem mm. like every time someone would try to make me think it's a problem I was like no you're wrong like all the others they they were yeah, able yeah. to make me feel like oh like oh no like I'm the sensitive one because I don't like loud sounds or yeah. I don't like strong smells um blah 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 like oh or like take my my taste is so 
I eat like a child generally. I yeah. might taste so I just I, I don't like textures and no. I, I'm very, very difficult with food. And I don't know like anybody my age who eats the way I do, like just so little yeah. um, in variety, not in quantity, but in variety. Like I always eat the same things like every single day I eat the same thing. And I'm fine with that. To me, there's yeah. no problem no. doing that. Other people who have like taste buds who like everything, they wouldn't like my lifestyle. But <laughs> like essentially, like it's very, very simple stuff like, oh, chicken nuggets, pasta with butter, and like all these very simple things yeah, that yeah. You know, children like, like a children's menu, that's my menu. That's perfect yeah. for me. Yeah. But it's like, and all those things, I would always feel like, oh, I'm the wrong one because yeah, yeah. I'm just too sensitive and this mm. and that. When it came to creativity and imagination, I was always like, no, I'm not mm. wrong about that one. For oh, sure. that's good. I love that that you got to hold on to that one. Yes. I like that. And and I suspect maybe because you mentioned that it was sort of escaping into these worlds and books, for instance. I think a lot of us kind of need that especially when when real life or the real world seems harsh or cold or um, difficult to understand sometimes. Why aren't people nicer? Why don't they get things? Then it's extra nice to, to withdraw into somewhere that we get to both control and, and sort of design the way we like it. Yes, I, I really, I, it also, um, I mean, for me, at least, because in my household, um, emotional expression was not welcomed that much. Uh, no. So it was very like, you must behave like even good emotions are not good. Like you shouldn't have emotions almost. Oh, so yeah. for me, um, it was books weren't just for imagination it was also a way to process emotions it was a safe place for me yeah. to feel those emotions same for music and yeah. other forms of uh, creative expression mm. really just so that those emotions could be processed in a way that was more I don't know controlled like if you're you're watching a movie and something is sad and you're crying at a movie yeah. people are just going to be like oh she's crying about the movie but if yeah. you're just crying in a corner people yeah. are going to like like there's there's so it's like there's it was just easier for me especially when I was younger to um use those kind of outlets to process yeah. emotions in a way that was easier more... for other people to handle in a way yeah. right yeah. Anyway, yeah because yeah exactly um it was it was quite hard you know a um in in the environment I was in even at school it was like you shouldn't it's like you shouldn't also have too many emotions because yeah. if you're really happy, people get jealous and then you get in trouble. And if you're sad, people are annoyed and tired of you because you're sad. Yeah. So you get in trouble. It was always like, no matter what you did, you got in trouble. That's what I got from school. <laughs> it was like you got in trouble, whether it was with your friends or with teachers oh. or with something. Um, so as a child, I would keep to myself, I would zone out and I would be in my yeah. world. And yeah. somehow that was also a problem. But yes. <laughs> it's like everything is a problem. But mm. um, yeah, for me, that was just, it was just safer. Like even if I listen, for instance, to a song mm. that is really sad and it will make me sad, mm. but I feel safe in that sadness in that moment. Yeah. As, I, as it goes with the song or yeah. with the book I'm reading or something, it's mm -hmm. like a safer place for me. And it's still true to this day. That is just, because um, then I have some friends who are like, oh no, but that song makes me sad. I don't want to feel sad. But I'm like, no, I want to feel sad and process that emotion with that song. And to yeah. me, that's easier than, because otherwise with life and with the environments we live in I mean the world of productivity productivity there's no time like in that kind of world like they don't leave us time for emotions and even though I do spend the time to you know think about that to journal to do all mm. these things yeah. um sometimes I mean habits are habits and I yeah. won't realize something's bothering me until I'm listening to a specific song and I'm like oh, this is what I've been feeling this whole time and it puts yeah. words to my feelings yeah. and it just it just really helps so that's why like one of the many reasons why I think creativity and imagination is just so beautiful and yeah. 
it has so many applications other than just entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, it creates a space to explore those emotions or maybe feel less alone with them because yes feel validated as well yeah, like validated, when, yeah. i remember especially in high school effect a lot of teenagers like we just feel like when we're a teenager just so misunderstood and yeah. oh um, yeah being a teenager yeah. is hard for everybody yeah. i think but yeah so exactly when I remember when I was a teenager and I would listen to songs and I would be like oh my god this is exactly how I feel and I would yeah. feel so comforted even if yeah. it was like super sad it was like I felt yeah. comforted because yeah. there was someone somewhere yes. who understood exactly how I was feeling and music is just so nice I love music mm. so I was I would I was like ah oh, yes this is exactly and you know, my parents would be like, why are you listening to such sad songs? What is this? But yeah. it would make me feel better yes. because I would listen yeah. to it. Um, so to me, I feel like uh, I even used to write songs. I mean, I was a bad songwriter, but I was a child also. Like I would write songs when I was like eight. <laughs> like That's I would so cool. just write songs um, because I used to play piano. So I was trying to like match songs to piano I was yeah. doing. And yeah, this was all... Um, this was all in an attempt really to, you know, process emotions and be who I really am because otherwise um, the environment just didn't really allow for that. Yeah. I mean, even, even for when I was doing piano or guitar lessons, like I hated the way it was being taught. I was like, no, I, I don't like reading music. I hate reading music. I mm -hmm. listen to the music and then I learn how to play it uh, through yeah, yeah. trial and error. That's mm -hmm. how I do it. I know it's not the quickest way, but um, it's the way I like it because it makes me feel like I'm one with the music instead of yeah. just like reading something mm. on a piece of paper like for me music is about touch and sound not eyes so if yeah. I read something my my visual sense is just so powerful that if it's activated it's gonna everything else is just gonna be uh. like I just try to not use it so for music I always try to like listen to it the, to music and then just kind of let my fingers and my body feel the, the sound and that was just so much easier but then again it was a problem because no. I, was the, I was the weird one who was like why are you doing things like this and yes. as a child I was very stubborn I am still very stubborn and I did not want to learn how to read music and my teachers did not like that they no, were but and, thank god that that you're staying true to you even though yes, stubborn I, can be annoying to oh, other yeah. people. I was yeah. way too stubborn for that. As a ch I was like, no, because, yeah. and I didn't understand why they were so hell bent on me doing it their way because I was mm. still bringing in like the result they wanted. I was still yeah. learning the song. Yeah. I was still, I was still going as fast, if not sometimes faster than the rest of the class. So I was like, okay. what, are, what, what is the their problem? problem? Yeah. yeah, it's like every time I was just like, what? Or like even in high school, like I had, I would do things in a strange, I don't find it strange, but people would find it strange because I would, instead of studying, I would essentially just help my friends study and teach it to them. And so my parents were like, oh my God, you're spending so much time helping others. Why don't you help yourself? But to me, teaching it to someone else was the best way to retain information. Yeah. And like when I would come and I would have my exam and questions, I would just be like, oh, well, I answered that question already yesterday when I was helping out someone else. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that's perfect. And my friends loved when I would like teach them because I made it so much more simpler than teachers. Mm. So to me, that was like genius. Yeah. But my friends were like, no, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I would still get really great grades so I was like mm. what is the problem like yeah. if I was failing my classes I wouldn't understand the concern yeah, but yeah. I would not so every time it's like my whole life it was so strange like going from environment to environment people getting so I don't know like triggered by yeah. the way I would do things and I would I would always be like how does this affect you though yeah <laughs> because I'm still bringing in results I'm yeah. still having good grades I'm still getting um good work like ever if it was um in my workspace I was still um having great work results I was yeah, like yeah. Well, what is the problem here some people um, just can't handle yeah. you know things being different than what they're used to 
I think yes. it's because it's sort of implying a question that, hey, are you sure your way is the only way or even the best way? Yeah. And I think people don't like that. No. But I think something you said is so amazing because you said that listening to those songs and knowing that someone somewhere understood exactly how you're feeling that's kind of what you get to do today isn't it by copywriting and as you said sort of figuring out how the clients what they need so that you can you know deliver in the words or you know awaken the emotions that they need i think yeah. that's really cool Yes, I really that, like yeah. copywriting for that reason. Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of copywriting gets done with the like the intent to have someone buy, but the way I do the copywriting is in a way that I will able to serve the person mm -hmm. that is reading. And I want I don't want them to like I don't want the copywriting to be like the only thing is like, oh, you need to buy. And like, no, it's like <laughs> you need to buy if you actually need to. Like if, yeah, if yes, this yes. product or this service or this whatever is good for you, yeah. then here are all the reasons why it will help you. But yeah. if it's if it's like if you don't need that kind of help, like no, you don't need that. Like no. this, if this won't serve you. So that's why it's like copywriting is really um the way i write it to really target it to the person who is going to actually need this kind of service or product yeah. or whatever it is because um i mean we don't have unlimited resources we have only a small amount of time and we don't have unlimited money mm. um so we want to invest time and money in things that will serve us so it's yeah. really about um even for things that are free because i mean even if you're like Still spending oh, time and energy, you're aren't still, you? You're still yeah. spending time and energy. So you want to make sure it's really going to target the right people. And so that's why I think copywriting can be so beautiful when used um, yeah. with that mindset. I love that. So to round out this really great conversation, what would you like your legacy to be from your sensitive journey? I would love to... Um, be able to help other sensitive and creative people who you know have felt the way i have felt and the way i still sometimes feel because i'm still on a journey i'm not at the top of the stairs yet <laughs> i don't I'm think there is any any that's true. sort of final destination or yeah, finish exactly. line or yeah i'm still going i'm still going through it and i want to be able whether it's true you know the work i do with businesses and the mm -hmm. work i do with my business or whether it's through my future books that I will write, um, because I do, I want to do my fiction books, of course, but I do want to write some nonfiction books as well. Those will take more time because, um, I mean, to me, it just takes more time, more research, whereas mm -hmm. like a fiction book, like I can create a world like that. Like yeah. my brain will just go and uh, if I get a prompt and I'm like, okay, perfect. And then I create everything and like, it becomes this huge thing in like one day, but yeah. I feel like with nonfiction, it requires more, at least for me, it requires mm -hmm. more research, more, uh, to ways to synthesize things where with, with fiction, you don't want to synthesize things. <laughs> you want them to have, you want like dialogues everywhere, descriptions, m ways to make the person feel in the book. So, yeah. um, but I do want to do all these different things so that it can reach even more people because some people, um, some sensitives and creatives, what they, uh, the help they will need from me will be through my fiction books. Some it will be through my nonfiction. Mm. Some it will be through their businesses as I help them, you know, reclaim their time, find a way to be on, uh, to do their media and marketing in a way that is good for them, that serves them as well. Because we always, especially people who are um, service providers, we always think about how can we serve mm -hmm. our audience? How can we serve our, our audience? But we need to not forget ourselves. We're still a person. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we need to also be able to serve ourselves through that work. So it's um, really about finding a strategy that helps them you know, feel more aligned, that helps them reclaim their time and also... Uh, still, of course, help their clients. That's yeah. also very, always very important, but I still want to make like 
put a little spin to it so that people don't fully forget themselves because I yeah. started forgetting myself when I started in working in business I was just thinking about my clients just thinking about my audience and I yeah. I was like oh I know these symptoms I'm going through burnout now like I need yeah. to stop before I go there and I know this is the case for a lot of entrepreneurs mm. so I want to be able to help people through all these different ways um because my I mean my mission since a long time has been to help people when I was a child I wanted to be a vet I wanted to help yeah. animals yeah. <laughs> and then when I grew up I was starting I was like oh I want to be a doctor and then um I was like and then I started uh, a degree like in biomedical sciences and we had to do psychology and I was like oh psychology is so cool I want to help people yeah. with psychology yeah. so then I switched it to psychology and I was mm -hmm. like oh I want to help people that way yeah. um but the training I was having it just the training they do with like it didn't align with what no. what I wanted to do who I wanted to be and now I feel like I found a way that is just more aligned maybe eventually um I will have other kinds of services that will work more with mindset and stuff like that mm -hmm. but for now what I really like doing is to work um with strategy and design that is uh what feels aligned for me at the moment yes that sounds really good and it is very important, as you say, for, for entrepreneurs to have that support. So I love that you're out there doing that and helping people, sensitives, so that they can take care of themselves. Yeah. Thank you very much for being here and for sharing your story and your beautiful inner worlds. <laughs> <laughs>